ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Maybe. Sometimes. Tell me about this. I want to know more. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Holy cow. We've had a lot of fun. <laughs> so Friday night was a very exciting night for me and not yeah. because I went anywhere because uh-huh. <laughs> um, as you know I'm not a big socializer but mm-hmm. at 11 p.m. on Friday night I hit the send button and sent off my uh, manuscript for my book which Woo! has been yay, yay! two two or so years in the making and um i just finished all the major major edits so uh, i'm so excited it's gone it's in the publisher's hands and yay what an accomplishment it will languish there for months and months and months (laughs) well see my manuscript it's out of your hair (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) well see my manuscript did languish for about a year because the company went through some transitions with their editors, but uh-huh. um, I've got this fabulous new editor, and she has done amazing work for um, with the manuscript. And um, you know what? It's gone. It's out of my hands, and yeah. she says she's going to take a look at it, and we're just moving things forward. So, oh. so excited, and I don't think I ever want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, because I like your publisher, and I wanted to not think badly of them because of the way way they were treating you so i'm glad yes. it's, they they had a turnover and now things are good again when you hope oh things are great <laughs> well you know what so far so good and my editor is fabulous i mean she's taken my manuscript which was probably oh at about a five and yes. she's turned it into like <laughs> a nine ten so great. Um, i am so excited and you know but i just i'm so over it and i remember way back when I first started, I was talking to some authors who had been published and, um, you know, they were kind of like, oh yeah, wait till the end. You won't be as excited. <laughs> I think that was me and Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> Not to Probably mention any was. names. <laughs> I remember that conversation. We were trying to let you yeah. down gently. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I thought, you know, it would be this big, like woohoo party <laughs> and like it's done. And honestly, I could care less right yeah, now about the yeah. thing. I'm really kind of yeah. over it. So. There's a little bit of excitement when you get the finished copies in a big box you get your yes. copies, yes. but it's not as spectacular as you think it's going to be. No. You think it's going to be life-changing to open that box, and here's a published thing with your name on it, but sort yeah. of like, whoa, okay. <laughs> where is the magic wand that makes my life better? It's just a book. <laughs> it's just a piece of well, paper. See, I now have to now, promote it. Yeah, well, see, that's my thing, right? It's like, okay, now I'm going to have to worry about the reviews. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And <laughs> well, of first course, you have to solicit the reviews a lot of the time. I do. I yes. So I'll be my publisher up, like <laughs> sent me this book called Gorilla Publicity: All the Things You Need to Do to Promote Your Book. Oh. And it was. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this the publisher's job? job? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I have to do this. Well, thankfully so they. Nobody knows about my books. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Thankfully, they have a, a marketing machine happening over there, so yeah. they'll be they'll be you, you know I'm I'm hoping there'll be some marketing on their end, and um, yes, and then I will do my own, and of course hit up my my very close friends, <laughs> Catherine and Terry. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> so we know what what Nicole's shameless self promotion is going to exactly. be from that moment on. Have night. I mentioned I wrote a book? Five years. <laughs> <laughs> As well, it should be. Uh, well, right. you know, I think it, it came out. I think. Oh gosh, I must. Uh, I'm I'm probably up in the two hundred and seventy page range. So, okay, it was quite a feat. Yeah. Let me tell you. Well, so, good for you, and I will be yeah. happy to give you repeated opportunities to publicize it by writing blog posts for me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you. Anytime, like well, maybe right now. <laughs> feel free feel free to interview me, Terry. <laughs> I shall. Anytime. And you know what? And I do have to give you credit where credit is due because you were the one that um, kind of put planted the seed and uh, <laughs> I'm so watered sorry. it a bit. <laughs> I don't know if it's turned into a weed or not yet, but <laughs> I hope we can still stay friends nonetheless. Yeah. 
<laughs> so anyway. How many times did you curse my name while you were going through the <laughs> editing? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> my, my little ears were burning. <laughs> so that's my big news this week. I'm That is I'm really awesome. Exciting. Yeah. That is yeah. such a good, that is like the Thank best you. feeling it is. of the whole thing of writing the book is being yeah. done with just a particular like, phase. Just go. Just leave my computer. Just It's in somebody else's hands. <laughs> I don't want to see it. Look at it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Think about the it. The joy of authorship. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Are you going to have to like go to bookstores and, and ask people to sign your book? Oh, Lord, I hope not. <laughs> I did that once. I felt so pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello, sir. I wrote a book. <laughs> I think it's all you want to read it. I think it's such a niche uh, topic. I don't think they'd expect me to do that. Well, you got to go to conferences. You got to go to conferences, and they'll set you behind a little table with a bunch of other other authors. Yeah, and you'll like compete to get people to come over to you. God, (laughs) give free stuff. Free stuff and get them to your side of the table. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. Yeah, so that's, that's so many my... things to look forward to, Nicole. Uh, we shall enjoy so going through not, all of them with you. Has not ended. Is that what you're saying? It's not over. <laughs> there is so much more humiliation to come, honey. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not, well, not going to think about that. Let's let's think let's about our podcast. Let's get on with today's humiliation. <laughs> talking on podcasts. All right. Well, welcome to Parenting Roundabout, a weekly podcast about the things that parents are talking about, obsessing about, and complaining about right now. I'm Catherine Haleko, and with me today are author Nicole Eredix. Yes, soon to be author. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Love her work. And also author Terry Morrow. Yay, Terry. <laughs> of many underpublicized books. <laughs> So today on the podcast, we're going to talk about summer camp on our Friday speed round. We will hear an interview with occupational therapist Megan Corridan, and we will do some shameless self-promotion um, aside from that, which we've already started. Um, but first, we are going to talk about our ready for kids checklist ah, or how to how right. to think about whether you're ready for kids so nicole you have this one okay so i have a son who's 21 <laughs> and he um we've been sort of there's been a lot of discussion around his career lately and what he's going to do because he's going to be a senior in university this coming year oh my gosh can you believe Didn't it just start can you believe it? I know, How right? How doing this podcast, man? Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah, he's going to be a senior this year. So wow. he'll be graduating. He skip a year or anything? Nope, nada. <laughs> I'm completely freaked out. I know, isn't it? Um, so And so is he, because he doesn't know what he's going to do. <laughs> um, he, well, he does have an idea. I, I mean, he, you know, could always fall back on his lizard uh, <laughs> <laughs> skills but he wants to parlay that into a the field of medicine wow uh, wow so he is um kind of plotting out his next decade of life wow. <laughs> which it will take no pressure <laughs> for yeah. him to accomplish that so he we were talking last night and you know he's he's very also he's also very family oriented too so mm-hmm. he was saying, well, you know, I don't want to be 40 and having kids, right? Like, I, I would like to be a younger parent, yeah. like younger dad. Well, <laughs> You're like, are you trying to tell us something, son? I know, right? I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know where this is going. But, I mean, my, my husband and I, I mean, my, you know, we were still, we were fairly young. We've talked about this before, yeah. but we were in our early 20s when we started having kids. And um, so he, so we were, you know, talking about, like, okay, well, when – when would fees, you know, when, if, if it was possible, when would he want to have children, right? So, yeah. you know, I mean, of course, all these ducks have to line up, <laughs> be in a row, <laughs> right. uh-huh. uh, you know, and um, so anyway, he said, well, when did you know that you were ready to have children or wanted to have children? And um, I said, well, it's interesting because I never really thought about it. All I knew is that I had this like checklist or these series of really? hoops that I had to jump through. <laughs> <laughs> and once I got through those hoops, <laughs> then I could sit down and think about having kids. So it wasn't always something that 
I knew that I wanted to do or I knew I wanted to have, which is interesting because my all my teen years and my early years, I babysat, I taught swim lessons, I taught figure skating lessons. I was always around kids, but mm-hmm. I never ever thought, okay, I can't wait to be a mom and I can't wait to have kids. Mm. And so, um, so I was kind of saying, you know, I was saying to him, well, you know, I had this this big checklist in my head, of, you know, and I just <laughs> went through the checklist and crossed it off and crossed it off and kept crossing. Did it you off. add a few more items to it just to slow him down a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> You must own a house. <laughs> right. That will slow him down quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so I had quite a few things on my little list, which included, of course, huh. getting through school and um, having a job and being married. It was a very traditional approach, yeah. mind mm-hmm. you, because, mm-hmm. you know, things don't need to be done that way. And uh, I had to have a car. <laughs> I don't know why that was there. <laughs> How are you going to get home from the hospital, you know? That's right. I also had to have a pet. I needed to have a pet. (laughs) Oh. So practice, baby? It must have been. That must have been the reason. Um, And I also needed to live in the city, which was interesting because I did did not live in the city when I had my son. So I don't know. Hmm. I did not accomplish that. Huh. Anyway, (laughs) so it (laughs) made me think, okay, do other people have these kind of requirements or do they just kind of let it happen when it happens? Do they pre-plan it? Do they, I don't know, like, how do you know when you're ready for kids? Like, it was hard to answer him, right? Like, hey, this worked for me, but how, how do you know when you're going to be ready for kids or want to have children and want to try and have children or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. especially these days, because it seems like the the delay to have children is far more common than what it used to be. So yeah, I don't know. That's hmm. my question. What? Uh, how did you know you were ready, or what? <laughs> what did you need to have in place <laughs> before you had your children? I guess I had a lot of those traditional things in my mind too. Like Mm -hmm. you said, you know, I wanted to be married, um, want to, but beyond that, I I don't think I was thinking that much about it, which is probably not so smart, but you know, (laughs) I, I don't remember thinking like I need to get to a certain place in my career Hmm. um but I also didn't get married until I was 30 so Mm -hmm. I had already been been working for a while Mm -hmm. um and I I do remember thinking at some point in my 20s when I was single like well you know if I get to a certain age which I hadn't pinned down (laughs) (laughs) um I would want to have a kid anyway you know have a kid even Uh, if I wasn't even mm-hmm. if I wasn't married, right. um, mm-hmm. but it just sort of never got to that point. So I didn't have to think about it too much. Um, but even when you were married, did you feel like you had to have like these things in place before you started to think about kids? Like, like, you know, um, the only thing I, I had started a new job pretty like right before I got married, like maybe a month or two before I got married, I started a new job. So I said, well, I can't have a baby until I've been in this job for at least a year. Uh-huh. So let's, we need to wait <laughs> a couple of months. Yeah. And that was it. I was like, I need to get my maternity benefits. So, um, <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea. So that was the only thing that I, that I put a pause on until mm-hmm. after I got married. And yeah, so. Our kid was born like a year and a half after we got married. Ah. <laughs> Pretty quickly. Yeah. Very organized. Yeah. Yes. And I got a really, really good maternity leave. So it was nice. definitely worth waiting for. Well, that yeah. was like with my, my daughter because um, when Josh came along, it was easy to, I was only substitute teaching. So it was easy to take that leave because I wasn't committed to anything but with my daughter I said in my mind I was like okay I cannot have her until it's 2001 we had my son in 1996 (laughs) (laughs) I said it has to be 2001 because that was the year that the Canadian government um, legislated year-long maternity leaves so I was like I wanted to be at home with her and wanted to be on a maternity leave for that length of time. So, um, 
I had to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew that Canada had that. So, but I didn't realize it wasn't until 2001. Huh. So that yeah. was worth, that was worth waiting for. I it was. Say. Well, it was, six, it was six months prior to that, which is still a good deal according to American standards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then uh, in 2001, then it became a year. So yeah, it was, uh, I, that was another little thing on my checklist for my second one. <laughs> How about you, Terry? Smart. Yeah, I'm How trying you to know? remember. I mean, it's been a long time. Um, I, I mean, I think I certainly wanted to be married and I wanted to be at a certain level of maturity. And, um, but you know, but by the time I got married, my husband and I were both in our thirties and we bought a house right away as soon as we actually a little bit before we got married just to, so we would have it there. So we were all ready, you know, yeah. all the boxes were checked and then nothing happens. So this is why I'm a feel that, you know, you can schedule it down and say, this yeah, is right. when the right time will be. That always made it happens then. Yeah, uh, you know, and it was a lot of as I've talked about before. It was a lot of trying, and then it was a lot of trying to adopt, and all sorts of things going on. And in the, you know, while this all was going on, my brother in law and sister in law got married, and of course she got pregnant. And then I'm like, I would really be broken hearted if I didn't have a baby and they did, which is stupid. You know, that's never yeah, the way you want hard. it to be. But yeah. emotionally. It's hard mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we were ready. We checked off the boxes. We were ready to go. And right. yeah. while we're waiting and nothing is happening, other people seem to be having no problem. And right. you go to all these baby showers and you're going, wait a minute. <laughs> I was higher up on the list here. What's right. going on? So, uh, you know, that's why I sort of the whole idea of planning things I have come to feel is... You know, good is an intellectual exercise, and if it makes you wait till a time of your life that's appropriate, but nobody ever really knows. And there's kids who've come along as a complete surprise when their parents were not ready at all, who have done just fine, and their parents, in retrospect, feel like, hey, guess what? We were ready. So mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, readiness is overrated. Well, and I think in my naivety, um, I didn't. that didn't even cross my mind, like at 24, 25. Mm -hmm. And then as I got older, uh, obviously became far more aware that, you know, there, it doesn't always happen the way you plan it. <laughs> right. So I That's tried right. to, that was one of the things that I tried to impress on my son when we were talking was that you can have all of this mapped out, but that doesn't yeah. mean that it's going to happen. And so you mm -hmm. also need to be prepared for that because I don't think from what I understand, I don't think there's a lot of, um, support maybe there is more so these days but um just you know I've had lots lots of friends over the years who have tried and you know took them several times or didn't at all yeah. or so yeah. um so talking to him about having kids I also mentioned hey <laughs> it's <laughs> not a hundred percent guarantee <laughs> yes right yeah, like for sure you know you can spend all these years trying not to get pregnant and then when you want to it still may not happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah prepare so. yourself for all eventualities is a good plan exactly so do you how, do you share that with Which your kind kids of makes you want to start early <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know right. uh, and also to just be open to other uh, options, a force greater than yourself, seeing things yeah. with more right. perspective. Yeah, right. exactly. One might say. I think um, too, also like being careful or taking care of your body, like, mm -hmm. and making sure that you're healthy and not, you know what I mean? Like just kind of in yeah. a good place physically. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Right. I just like there's all these like little requirements. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Well, it's hard when you're talking to your kid because you want to leave the door open that if something happens, you don't want them to be afraid to say anything. My mom will be so mad if I got pregnant right. now. Right. Right. But at the same time, you know from your elderly wisdom that really there are better and worse times, and if you can make it to the better time. You should do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, my, my daughter says this sometimes and, you know, she has no husband on the horizon at this point. And, you know, whenever we talk about it, I say, well, do you feel like you would be ready for that now? No, 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 no. And I'm going, yes, thank you. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's, it's hard to 
there are kids for whom parts of those that checklist are never going to happen. And then that's you right. want to say, well, that's it. I'm sorry. If you can't get all these things, then, you yeah. know, that part of your life is just not going to happen. Move on to something else. Get a hobby. Get a cat. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, well, it's, you don't want to put pressure on and you don't want to also send the wrong message and one of the fun things about parenting is dealing with those questions <laughs> yeah I felt I mean because I felt a lot of pressure to have things done the right quote unquote right way mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah I don't want to have I mean I want my kids to know that there's probably an might be a little bit easier to have children when you have yeah. a career and income <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want them to not tell me or right. be afraid or have it think that it's going to ruin their life if that doesn't yeah. happen yeah. on that timeline. I don't know. I'm doing mm -hmm. a lot of talking here. Catherine, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like Terry said, it's, it's something that obviously you are the best person to talk with your child about it, but right. at the same time, there's so many layers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <there>. Layers. That, <laughs> yes. that make it hard. I mean, I never <sighs> felt pressure from my parents Mm -mm. you know, in terms of getting married or having kids. And, um, both of my siblings actually don't have children, um, have chosen oh, not wow. to. So, and my parents have been very good about not being difficult. About yeah. that, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Like once in a while, my brother still, you know, I mean, he and my sister-in-law are both in their 40s now and he he will still once in a while be like yeah maybe we'll have a baby like just to mess with my mom oh no your yeah. poor mom and she that and is... she knows he's uh. just you know she she knows he's just doing that for for fun but right anyway oh. so luckily they've they've been good about it and and my mom also always worked when I was a kid, so I think I had um, a role model for being able to do that, mm -hmm. yeah. for being able to work and have kids at the same time. I mean, I personally prefer working less than she <laughs> 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 uh, So yeah, she was, she worked really hard and, and had a, you know, was ambitious and had a, had a great career and I am happy to have like my quiet little <laughs> freelance <laughs> life. <laughs> That's so, funny. So, you kind so of, yeah, I mean, because I... my mom never worked, and or I shouldn't say she, she didn't work. She only worked when I went back to school or when I went to college, back to school. Mm -hmm. um, but she was always a stay-at-home mom, and then. I was like, no, I have to work <laughs> I have to get a career. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> yeah, it was like kind of the opposite experience yeah yeah I mean I think the the nice part was that I I kind of knew from the from the other side of it that a kid could be perfectly fine and happy and successful mm -hmm. with having a full-time working parent you know yeah. or mm -hmm. two full-time working parents and you know we always had various babysitters and nannies and and it's just an extra person that's yeah taking care of you it's huh. not in place of so uh -huh. that was a good good lesson for me hmm. wow and then what about with your own daughter you just it's and kids I mean and your son it's just yeah I mean it hasn't really come up yet <laughs> although um you know maybe it should maybe that's something I should be Ugh. talking to them about but yeah like <laughs> is that something you bring up or you wait <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to come to you <laughs> yeah kind of tiptoe around it mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I don't remember yeah. ever having conversations with my mom about it or having any pressure or anything I, I I'm very good at putting pressure on myself on <laughs> to have things done in the way that I think they should be done nobody else needs to contribute but right. uh, I do my, my half sister, who I think I've mentioned here, is much older than me. Mm -hmm. uh, had two kids. And my mom, although she was the step grandma, she still was fully grandma to those kids. And they, Aww. quite a lot of time, they stayed with her while she, uh, 
they stayed with my mom and dad while their mom was working. So she had a huge immersion grandparent experience. Mm -hmm. So I think that took a lot of the pressure off. Plus I was on the other side of the country. So I guess she knew she wouldn't have that same kind of experience with my kids. So she's, oh, well, if this adoption doesn't work, don't worry about it. What the hell? <laughs> I'm like, it, whereas to me, it was like, oh, if You're this like, does not work, my life is over. Yeah. So that was hard. We, she and I were not in sync and I resented that. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, so it was one of the few times where my husband's parents were more in sync with me, which freaked me out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but they also weren't, they weren't putting pressure on, but of course my, you know, uh, their other son was Having also kids. newly married and was, uh, you know, going to start yeah. a family. So it wasn't all like they were, you know, the clock was ticking. Whereas the grandchild there, they had, you know, a couple of pots on the stove, I suppose you could say. <laughs> a couple but, of pots uh, on the stove. <laughs> but I was, I was extremely stressed about it and upset at the prospect of it never happening. And, you mm -hmm. know, I did all the right things. Where's my baby? You know, yes. my checklist. Look. This is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fair. Where is it? Yeah. I've checked everything off. <laughs> I jumped through the hoops. I know. There was to be a prize at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, like, that's a, that, and that is kind of what I want to, uh, now that my son is older, yeah. I just want him to be aware that life isn't always rosy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that or predictable. Yeah, or predictable right. or that you can plan these things out. Mm -hmm. He um he uh has we know a, a young lady who has her life very well mapped out and yeah. she's only 20 one mm. and uh i keep thinking oh honey <laughs> know, <right? laughs> if it doesn't work out that way you're gonna be <laughs> yes uh, yeah sorely disappointed so i don't know i yes. kind of i guess more practical about it <laughs> i think i was very naive when i was younger <laughs> yeah very well, very naive that's the function of youth yeah you know, that's how we get through is by believing that we can control things yeah, and, uh, that's right. Then once you believe you, then once you realize you can't, everything falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> Warn them about that. I, I have that. I have that experience yes. on a regular basis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps it's time we should move on from talking about when you know you want kids to when you know you want your kids to go someplace else. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and have a little chat about summer camp. Uh, we were unsure about what angle to put on our summer camp discussion, but it seems like something that is coming up right at the moment. So I'm going to ask y'all, are your kids going to camp this summer? Uh, if not, why not? And if there was an ideal camp you could send the to, them to, what would it be? So pick, you, take your choice from amongst those topics, Catherine. What do you got to say about camp today? All right. Well, my kids are both going to a traditional summer camp where it's on an island and oh you, my you on an swim. island an well just island. a little a little island in a like lake survivor? you know <laughs> no okay <laughs> survivor camp. do they have to canoe there or uh... <laughs> they go on a pontoon boat from ah. they, first they take a bus and then uh -huh. they go on the pontoon boat um across i mean it's what you could this sounds like a setting for so many movies and, and <laughs> it's, young adult yeah, novels, it's right? like a parent trap <laughs> style camp <laughs> um <laughs> all right then you're doing the camp thing right girl for one week only though i mean it's not like these <laughs> east coast camps where kids go for eight yeah. weeks in a row or something what is that? um they, they're only going for one week each <sighs> and, um because at the same the camp, time or different times different times because it's you know single sex so ah. the first week is a boys week and that's when my son is going and mm -hmm. then my daughter will go the following week and they are they've already talked about how they're gonna try to coordinate it so that they can like wave at each other as Aww. one is go one is coming and Aww. one is going <laughs> The pontoon boats pass. Yeah. Yeah. They want to like high five That's hilarious. or wave or something. Aww. <laughs> so, yeah. So we'll see. So coming up is when I have to get my son packed up. So that'll be, that'll be fun. Yeah. Wow. Do they have a whole list of what you are to send? Yeah, they have a list and it's pretty, you know, it's pretty predictable. And I got some, you know, real serious bug spray and um, they have to bring 
rags because they are expected to clean. Oh their no, cabin. they gotta bring their own rag. They have to bring their own rag. Bring your Not rag only to do they camp? have to clean at this camp, but they have to bring oh their own God. rags. Bring I've never their own heard. dust rags and oh oh my. they have to bring clothes. Your kids pins. are excited about this? Oh yeah, they can't. <laughs> Can they wait. bring like a little dust back or something? <laughs> they have to be a rag. No, I think it has to be a rag. <laughs> And they that bring so funny. clothes pins to hang up their to hang up their wet towels and wow. I don't know why they don't wow. have like hooks for those, but I guess to spread it out from corner to corner or something. Wow. So yeah, they Rugged, are man. They are very excited and <laughs> a week is good, you know. Yeah, like yeah. I think I would have a hard time with a really long camp. Yeah. Um, so I think a week is nice. Now, is this good for you that you will be without one child for a week rather than being without two children? Is it? Uh, do you like it that you'll have time with each one separately when the other one's in camp? Yeah. Or yeah, will you regret not having just some child-free time? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of nice to have just one at a time. And, yeah. Um, I feel like when they're when if they're both gone, then there's so much pressure on that yes. time. Like you better enjoy <laughs> this. You better like be super productive and go have lots of fun with your friends and your husband and do all this <laughs> Write stuff. A book. Yeah, and <laughs> like, oh, that's too much pressure. Yes, that's so true. this I gotcha. way you just have one kid, and I just have one one set of activities and driving driving around yes so. yes nice wow. so nicole yeah. is your is your daughter going to camp or son well oh, your son's no. out of camp age my, I guess. my son is 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 way your son's already camp family age. planning so <laughs> <Exactly>. All right. <laughs> my son is mapping out his career he's getting ready to graduate <laughs> from college he needs to go to the <sighs> young adult professional yes, camp exactly where they give you the paperwork for all of that where they give you the reality of life. They schedule in the baby. All right. What are you doing in uh, November of 2025? Yeah. No, he's he's beyond that. Although he does do his own little version when he goes and catches lizards in the desert. So, True. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's beyond that. My daughter, right. as you all know, does not do sleepovers. And the thought of a sleepaway camp terrifies her even though she's Aww. 16 <laughs> wow. um she's but you know she's just not even interested in camping period like mm. she's not i don't know what i've raised but she is not <laughs> she's you know she's not a rough it kind of girl and which is so Aww. funny because i didn't grow up that way i grew up very much the opposite so yeah um yeah, she has no interest. But then you in... moved her to California. I know, California. Right? Yeah, which <laughs> changed <laughs> everything. <laughs> There's not like some specialty camp somewhere, like there you know, are... tech camp or uh, or uh, hair camp or I don't know what is it, fashion <laughs> camp, camp. Oh my fashion God. camp. No, no, she no? would totally, totally be disgusted if she heard you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of the things you said she's interested in doing. She's interested in driving in, camp, maybe. You no, know, <laughs> she's all over the tech stuff and the STEM stuff. She's yes. not, you know, all about the fingernails. She's not all about the Southern California girl thing. Okay, okay. Um, that's kind of. I a went side. to music camp when I was growing up in Southern California. We all sat around with guitars and. Well, Same. there are a million camps down here yes. because of the population. This I mean, is what I'm saying. I would think there would be one a with camp the name for on everything, it. but they're sleep away. Like they're not in this area. Oh, and she won't sleep away. And she won't do that, right? I mean, ah. and we've exhausted every day camp in our community. Yes, yes, right? like I can see. Because she's 16. So, I mean, we've done everything. Yeah. But um, th the other part of that story, too, is that she's also having to take summer school to oh, um, that's right. get her PE uh, class out of the way, which um, got circumvented mid-year. And um, <laughs> unfortunately, due to her tennis coach, but we shall not go there. And, um, <laughs> we ranted about that last week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so anyway, so she's taking this PE class, which is kind of almost like a camp because they go from <laughs> 7.30 to 1 and they... PE camp. Every yeah. child's joy. Yeah, that's a dream come true right but, there. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> she was so she came home I'm like how was it I, I was expecting her to home. just like grouse about the whole thing but she's like oh so many of my friends are in it and we socialize I guess they because you know it's California right so yes. you know they do an hour of stretching and yoga and then they go <laughs> outside and they um, play you know some sort of I don't know softball or something and then they go to the pool and they just like languish in the pool for an hour and a half and that's oh, their pee oh man can oh, I go nice. to that camp yeah right I'm it's like the that. spa I think we need a mom this will be my campsite which exist, which existed would be a mom camp right, mm-hmm. right? shouldn't there be a mom camp where you would be. just go for a week you'd say you know you bring your stationery write your kids letters but yeah. you'd go someplace and like to like you'd go someplace like Nicole's gynecologist where you would just sit yeah. around and like you know in plush robes and um the yeah. occasional you know. mammogram just to keep exactly. things interesting <laughs> you can tell your family it's a health camp you know health a women's camp. health camp but you then, can go you know, languish I, in the spa. Yes, yes. <laughs> With your I, cucumbers I think some, and <laughs> tell, tell your tell your Beverly Hills gynecologist to work on that. I, I bet there's will. I bet there's something something there. They could they could expand I their will. business. They were awesome. Did I tell you that I got a bill for the mammogram the other week? Yeah. Did I tell was you it how much Beverly it was? Hills style? Yeah. Do you, do you want to take a guess how much it was? I have no frame of no reference idea. for how much they are normally. Minus health insurance, it was eight thousand dollars. Oh my God! Wait, <laughs> yeah. that was the part you had to pay. That was my patient responsibility. Ooh. But Ooh. <laughs> I'm hoping there's a but. <laughs> they must have some very uh, wealthy. What do you call it? Donors? I don't know. Something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> um, it was subsidized, and I only have to pay forty. <laughs> You got a charity mammogram from the Beverly Hills <laughs> College. <laughs> that is the best story I've heard in a long awesome? time, Nicole. Oh my gosh. We, we, we brought this little woman in from Redlands and gave her a mammogram. Yeah. We feel sorry for her. Yeah, and so and so. Promotional material. <laughs> she, she pulled up in a Toyota Corolla. We feel sorry for her. Look at these poor <laughs> impoverished people that we have here at our clinic. I'll be on their brochure, their philanthropy brochure. <laughs> or outreach. outreach. Um. <laughs> the Inland Empire. I just got I just got my notice that I'm supposed to go in for a mammogram. Do you think I can Ooh. fly out there and they'll See pay if they for subsidize my plane your ticket? flight? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Forty bucks. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, that no. is hilarious. Anyway, that little aside. <laughs> I'm the, yes, I'm the Beverly Hills charity case. <laughs> I don't think we can top that. I'm just going to say that's it for our Friday speed round. Remember, you can hear a new speed round every Monday through Thursday. And. <sighs> And now we're going to bring yes. you, so speaking of camp and writing letters and things, mm-hmm. um, we are going to bring you our interview with Megan Corridan, an occupational therapist, and it's all about writing and activity books that kids can work on over the summer um, and that maybe they might enjoy, so it doesn't sound like work, um, but it will help keep their skills up. So Great. Megan brings us a roundup of those. We're here today with Megan Corden, a pediatric occupational therapist, and we talk in about once a month about great activities and toys and apps that um, are fun for kids to use and also help them work on various skills that they need for school. Um, so, and that she uses in her therapy practice. So, this month we are going to talk about writing journals because it's a they are a great way for kids to keep up their writing and thinking skills in the summertime when school is out. So tell us a little bit about um, how writing journals are helpful and some of the specific ones that you've found. Uh, last year when I took my daughter to Switzerland, we, we kept a journal um, about her experiences there, the fun time she had. It was a lot of drawing at that point, uh, but part of it was just to keep her her brain sort of working and um, help with her handwriting. And as she's got older and her interest in handwriting has really, really exploded, um, I wanted to find a way to make 
um, handwriting fun during the summer because it's, kids just don't want to be doing work. Um, so I thought it was really important to, to try and find books that would motivate her, um, keep her thinking, but at the same time um, make handwriting fun and take away the, the stigma of homework kind of um, writing. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people are, are interested in that because there's so many books out there at this point. Um, and, you know, for the kids that I work with, it's, it's really important that if they're not going to be seeing me all summer, that they work on these, these skills. But these, mm-hmm. this is something that they are absolutely not interested in and avoiding. So I really wanted to find ways to make the handwriting fun. Um, and I was really excited to find all of these different books out there. Yeah. So tell us about some of your favorites from your collection that you have. Okay, so I'll start with the the ones that are most appropriate for for the preschoolers um, or kindergarten and first graders. Uh, my my favorite is one called Me. Um, it's a I always say the word wrong a compendium, and it's a it's a journal where kids get to fill in different pictures. Um, there's and it's all things about themselves. So one page is. Um, like two pieces of bread and you have to say what you like in your sandwich. And for some kids, you know, you might just have them draw in there mm-hmm. or where you could have them write what they, they like. Um, another page has, um, you know, tells you how tall, asks you to write how tall you are. Um, it, they're all things where, where kids can, can just share things about themselves. They can do this with their parents. They can, they can do it for their parents sort of as a gift. Mm. Um, and, and one of the nice things is, you know, you can do this one one year, and do it the following year, and sort of see how you've you've grown and how your interests have changed over the course of the year. Um, and it's nice because it's there is no pressure. Uh, kids can do it in one day if they want, or they can they can take their time and do it over the whole entire summer. Mm-hmm. And I think most kids definitely like talking about or writing about themselves. Yes, absolutely. Especially those four, five, and mm-hmm. six-year-olds. They're still sort of thinking about themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is called I Like, and it's an activity mm-hmm. book. And it's, again, geared towards the younger ages. And it's not as much handwriting. Um, there's, there's you know, fill-in-the-blank kind of right. things to talk about themselves. There's um, a blank pizza and you can draw whatever you like on your pizza, color it in. And, and I encourage kids to be as silly as they want. If they want to put lollipops on their pizza, they can put lollipops mm-hmm. on their pizza. This, it, you know, I, I like to take the pressure away, uh, from them about having to do something very specific. It's, I think it's important to sort of let, let kids be as creative as right. they want. And since it is their book, like let them do what they want. Uh, I wouldn't, worry about the spelling of things, sort of just let them have their own, own thoughts. And you know, as, as kids get older, worry about the spelling and all of those grammar kinds of things, but you want to make it fun and, and stress-free for them, especially as the, right. you know, their interest or interest in handwriting has to improve. Mm-hmm. One of, one of my favorites is um, one that I've been doing with my daughter it's called the choose kind journal. And okay. that is, um, I don't know if you've read the book Wonder by Archie mm-hmm. Fletcher. It's, it's a takeoff from that book. And, okay. Um, it, it sort of encourages kids to, to do something kind for somebody each day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I don't do it every day with my daughter, but we go through and we pick out some and we, for us, it's just about having a conversation about what you could do. Um, some of the things that they talk to you about are, um, you know, on random acts of kindness day, what kinds of acts of kindness can you do that will, will make somebody happy? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, do you have an elderly person in your family? What, you know, that they might be lonely. What could you ask them? Um, what would you like to hear about? Um, sort of, sort of encourage them to, to reach out to people who might, who might be lonely and need, need some help. Mm-hmm. Um, all different kinds of things, but they, they use quotes from the book and I like, you know, in, in this day and age where, where 
kids aren't necessarily encouraged to do kind things. It, it gets their their kindness juices sort of flowing and creates right. empathy and and more understanding for other people. Mm-hmm. And you have some ideas for a little bit older kids as well, right? Yeah. So um, one of them one of them is called Six Hundred and Forty Things to Write About. Um, I think for the kids that I work with, being able to start a story is really difficult for them. So I like that they these books all have prompts on something you can write about. Um, you know, once once they get started, a lot of my kids have don't have difficulty, but it's it's like that open ended journal writing is really challenging for them. Um, it, sure. and I, causes them frustration and and then it turns them off from the writing so um in 642 things to write about they have a young writer's edition that's that's geared more towards the four and eight year olds and then they have the regular version which is is like six to twelve i I mean i think adults could fill it out Mm -hmm. um it's all about it's prompting stories so one is um there's a street light a bear and a kid with a jar of honey you have to write a story where that includes all of those things. Um, just describe your dream right. house, you know, all things that, that get them create, uh, creatively, creatively writing with a little bit. Of ease. Mm-hmm. Um, I think once you know, they can look through and they don't, they don't necessarily have to write about that particular thing, but they can use it as a jumping off point. Right. Uh, another one I thought was nice. Um, there's one called just between us and it's a, it's a journal for moms and girls to fill out. Oh, okay. But they also, there's another one called, um, between mom and me and that's a mother son journal. So there's all different kinds of books out there. Uh, and I think it's, it's nice for parents who feel like they're struggling in, in being able to have conversations with their kids. Right. Um, it, one of the things that I know, I have a hard time is like my daughter doesn't always open up to me. And I think that's a, a, a thing that a lot of parents deal with. Um, and I think the most important thing about these journals is that kids feel safe writing and knowing that this is going to be between just them. Um, right. It won't be shared with other people. It won't be shared with their dad. It won't be shared with their brothers or sisters. Like it's just between you. Um, and I think it's a nice way to, for, for parents to, to get to know their kids and for their kids to get to know them a little bit better. Yeah. I think it would definitely inspire kids to get into topics that they wouldn't get. They wouldn't talk about right. in person. Um, when you're, when they're face to face, it's, it's a lot easier to do those hard discussions when you're not looking each other in the eye. So this kind of thing would be great for that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I just, I think I think writing, creative writing is very important. Um, it helps boost confidence and self-esteem. It helps with just organizational skills. Um, you know, the conversational skills are, you know, if you have a kid who, who has a hard time with writing, you know, you can, you can sit down and discuss what they're going to write and help them organize their, their thoughts and opinions. Um, you know, and, I always encourage kids to, to draw something that goes along with whatever they're writing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that sometimes helps kids write a little bit better. If, you know, with my daughter, she likes to draw the picture first and then tell the story. Um, whatever, whatever works for the kids is, is what I say go with. Good. Um, any, any other ones you want to mention before our time is up here? These are some great options. You know, one of the th- things that I also think makes handwriting kind of fun is just um, lighthearted things. Things like Mad Libs are a great oh, way yeah. to practice writing and reading. Um, and, you know, my daughter's really into the uh, the children's graphic novels. Mm-hmm. Um, and Usborne um, is a great company, and they have a write and draw your own comics. Oh, okay, fun. So they give you pictures, and you have to fill in whatever um, whatever the pictures are, or you can just get like a blank comic book. Um, they, there's all different kinds of them on Amazon, and they have the speech bubbles, and you just draw the pictures in. Um, but that's another great way for kids to 
to write, it might be a nice way for kids to get their, their feelings and thoughts out as well in the blank um, comics. Like that just right. might be their mode. Um, mm-hmm. And well. the Mad Libs, you can get them in tons of different like themes. Um, yes, yes. which my kids have loved I know over okay. over the years like yeah. you know they're all about summer vacation or they're all about like as one time my son was in a bookstore he's like I really want this Mad Lib and it was about Hanukkah like which is a holiday we don't celebrate but you right. know whatever <laughs> we bought it because he was into it so right no it's it, it's fun and I think it's again, it makes kids realize that writing can be fun and silly and doesn't have to be so serious all the time. Right. So, you know, one thing um, I I do want to mention is for kids who are struggling, um, make it really fun by going out and picking out like best pencils or or gel pen or or something. Something that makes it a little bit more special for them to be doing the handwriting. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and I often tell the kids that I work with to start with a little hand warm up um, to get those muscles. You know, some of the kids I work with don't like writing because it's hard for them. Their hands get tired. Um, they they don't have the endurance. So I like to have them start with some kind of hand strengthening activity, whether it be, you know, 15 minutes of Legos or, or playing with putty. Um, I just found these things called plus plus uh, building toys and that my kids love it and it's an open-ended um building toy and okay. but it's great for fine motor um strengthening and, and getting those little muscles stronger great good point absolutely well thank you so much megan and we will link to megan's blog post on all these journals it's at mac and toys dot blogspot dot com um, where you can get more information about the journals and activity books that we've mentioned and also some more um, suggestions there from Megan. So thank you so much. We will talk to you again next month. And it's always good to hear from Megan and all of her great ideas. I don't know when she has time to work and raise her kid because she's always like on the prowl for all these great products. I'm going to send my kid to OT camp and just, you know, have them do all these wonderful things all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Speaking of wonderful. I did actually do that (laughs) from time to time. It just wasn't called that. Yeah. (laughs) Speaking of wonderful, uh, we are going to, for our final segment today, do a little shameless self-promotion and direct you to some of the things on our sites that we think you should take a look at. Terry, what have you got? Well, I've been uh, editing a lot of posts for the Friendship Circle blog on things to do with your child over the summer. You know, lots of good educational goals, lots of good therapy goals, lots of good big things you should use this time for. Uh, You know, kind of the opposite of what, Catherine, you were saying, that when your kids are gone, you should get big things done. There's also a feeling for parents like, you have this two months, you know, Mm -hmm. set a big goal. Go, get it done, read 20 books, (laughs) teach your kid to potty train, all this big stuff. Yes, yes. And sometimes that's a lot of pressure. So I have written a list of extremely easy goals that any parent (laughs) can manage to get through and pat themselves on the back. So that will be on the Friendship Circle blog by the time this podcast is heard. Check it out. Cool. And I got your back. (laughs) What Um, have you got? Well, on the lines of you working on your book, I have been taking a children's book writing class. Oh, cool. Yeah. Congratulations. So, yeah, well, congratulations can probably wait until I actually (laughs) sell anything. Um, But it's been fun. It's been fun to work on some ideas that have been in my head for literally years. Wow. As uh, Chris Traeger might say. Yes. and even coming up with some more things through the homework that I've been doing, which I resist as much as your average 12 year old. But then once I do it, I'm like, oh, that's kind of a good idea. Like I could keep working on that and make it make it into something. So wow. that's, that's been fun. And that's how I'm spending my summer vacation. <laughs> Excellent. Exciting. I look forward to seeing that. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever, what, what comes out of it. <laughs> yeah. And I... I then I can give you my depressing speeches about how writing a book won't change. Yeah, like Catherine, I know. then it's your turn. I'll be polishing it up. <laughs> Nicole will help me this time. <laughs> oh, gosh. And what do you have, Nobody Nicole? Nobody stands a chance with us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
I actually, because I had finished my book, I actually wrote a blog post for the first time in forever. I noticed that and I thought, is that a new blog post or is it recycled? It was not a, no, it was not a mirage. It was not recycled. It was actually brand new. And um, so it's four things to know about successful, inclusive schools. So it kind of, you know, same theme, but different twist. (laughs) Right. So it's on my website. Mm Mm-hmm. Excellent. And that is it for this week's episode of Parenting Roundabout. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us every week. You can listen to podcast episodes on ParentingRoundabout.com or download them from Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe so you get all of our podcasts and mini-podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter where I am at Mamatude, Catherine is at Cihaleco, and Nicole is at Nicole Eredix. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at Roundabout Chat and look for us on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, YouTube, and Instagram too. Best of all, stop by our podcast page at ParentingRoundabout.com and read recaps, find links on all the stories we mentioned, and talk back in the comments. Thanks to John Moran for providing our in-and-out music, and I wish everybody a great week. Thank you.